All right, you guys, going into the new computer animation tutorial today, and what we're going to get into is creating a character tracing uh, and then animating it uh, with Wick Editor. And so to go ahead and get started here, we will go to New in the Wick Editor and create a new project. I've already got a Google image search queued up of the image that I wanted to use. We'll go ahead and save this image to your computer. I'll call it B Row <laughs> Bob Ross the man, the myth, the legend. I'm uh, going to go ahead and I can close this tab now and we'll want to upload this photo as an asset to Wick Editor. So I'll click open and then want to just take this photo, click and drag it to my stage. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here and then click on the photo. I'll want to lower the opacity just a little bit so that I can see through it and see how it fits to the stage. So I want to hold shift and click and drag the corner to shrink proportionally. I don't want to skew the proportions at all. And then uh, make your figure, basically your portrait, whoever you've chosen, fit inside the frame. So, you know, just a little bit below the top edge there, um, making sure I kind of line up, you know, where it's cut off at the bottom with the bottom edge, you know, and on the side, if they're on the side. Um, they may not have their shoulder cut off on their waist, so they might be sitting in the middle. Depends on how your photo's set up. Anyways, I'll go ahead and, well, I'll name this layer first, and then I'll lock it up. So I'm going to name this photo, and then go ahead and lock that layer up. Add a new layer. Uh, this layer 2 is going to go over the top of layer 1, and this layer 2, we could call this um, graphic. Graphic or drawing or anything like that will work. All right, so going to add a new frame to start tracing this image on. So I'm going to go to the pencil tool, make the width four or five is usually pretty good, and then go to the stroke color, which is the outline color, and I'll click on the eyedropper here, and that will allow me to make my stroke color wherever I click in this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and now zoom in on this space a little bit and start up my tracing action. So I'm going to go along the edge here, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're kind of creating a cartoony type little sketch. Um, so just go along all the outlines um, and edges. You don't really, like I said, need to be super exact because this is kind of like a cartoon sort of caricature type of, you know, little animation that we're making here. So just going along all the edges pretty generally. I don't need to do all the wrinkles and things like that, but um, that looks pretty good. So next I'll go to the fill color and again, choose the eyedropper, and at this time, take a, another shade of blue out of the shirt, and go ahead to the fill bucket and fill in this shape. So, it says my shape has a gap. Um, the first thing you can try uh, is turning up the gap fill amount, and then clicking fill again. And so that looked like it worked that time. I'll click again over here, and again over here. Again, this one it says has gap fill, uh, or a gap that needs to be filled. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit more on this area and see um, if I can find where the break is and move those lines closer together. So I'll take my path cursor tool here. It looks like it's right about there where those two lines don't quite line up. Take my fill bucket again, and it will let me fill that shape. So. Clicking here, I can recenter my project and continue onwards and upwards. So, back to my pencil tool, click on my stroke color and eyedropper tool again, and I want to take one of these kind of brown colors here. Um, take my pencil is already selected again, and I'm going to kind of loosely just go around the edge of the legendary furrow. And so the head shape is going to be on one layer for this graphic. I'll actually probably end up renaming this graphic layer into head because the head will be on one layer. And then if we're going to make the other uh, part move with a tween, so the um, hand moves with a tween, we'll want that to be on its own layer. So we'll have two layers pretty much in this project. Um, one for something that's moving and then the other for kind of just your portrait, right? So. Um, your portrait may have something moving that's not a part of the body, like mine. Um, you might have just something moving in the background, which is a fine way to approach it too. Oh, I forgot to leave space for his mouth, so I'm just going to go Edit, Undo, or Command Z. Um, go back to my pencil tool, and I'll want to just trace the stash a little bit and the bottom edge there. Um, also know that if you ever run into problems with your lines, like they go a little off, like that one kind of went off, you can use your path cursor tool to adjust rather than undoing and then redoing again. 
So now I'll just bounce back to my fill bucket tool, same color, and that looks pretty good. It looks like maybe there's a couple little spaces in here that got a little funny, but again, it doesn't need to be exact. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like a cartoony type drawing, and I'll go back in now and add in some of the uh, finer details. So going over some of the lines in the face, my pencil tool, I uh, already have that same outline color that I was using before. So going over these lines here, that first one was a little bit funny. I could adjust it, but I also could just hit Command Z. Um, sometimes if it's just a small line, it's easier to hit Command Z. Um, you know, if you think you can adjust it easily with the path cursor tool, then you can always go for it that way too. All right, so just need the bottom edge of the nose here. When outlining the nose, try not to outline the bridge marks on the nose. Um, really don't want to because usually those are really just shadows um, and you don't really want to outline them in a drawing kind of like this. So going to now turn off the visibility of the photo layer. I can click hide layer right here to see how I'm doing um, and maybe fill in or adjust some other details on this layer. So um, things that I might want to do, maybe fill in the eyes. We'll see how these look. All right, um, maybe I want to fill in the skin tone, so I'll turn the visibility of this layer back on, go to my fill color again, eyedropper, uh, get a skin tone here, and then go ahead and fill it in. All right, so coming along, fill in these ear shapes here. Um, the teeth, I'll want a white color to fill. Let's see, take this one maybe here and fill that in. Now I'll go ahead and zoom on out and let's see how I'm doing. So turn the visibility on this layer off. Looks like it's going pretty well. So I want to fill in, you know, break the gap in a shirt right here, and then I'll go on to animating the hand. So um, turn the visibility back on with this layer. And again, like I said, so this graphic is actually going to be head. We'll call this head or face, and then we'll go uh, scroll down and click add another new layer. Oops, I don't think I clicked. Yep, there we go. And this one we will call hand. So this would be the place where anything else you want to animate in your portrait goes. Um, maybe your person doesn't have a hand, kind of very conveniently sticking up here like the photo that I found. Um, you know, and you don't actually animate something like that. Maybe you just animate something in the background here um, too. And that's an okay way to approach this project as well. So anyways, back to my pencil tool going to choose um, the eyedropper within my stroke color, get the skin tone here again, and then I will take my zoom tool, zoom in a little bit, and I will start tracing onto this hand layer. Make sure that you have the correct layer chosen for whatever you happen to be tracing. I'm gonna go around all the outlines of the hand. You know, go around this part of the brush as well. I will come back for the rest of the brush, but right now just kind of doing all the parts that involve the hand here. And then kind of closing that up. Uh, I think I did pretty good getting them all. Go to my fill bucket, uh, choose a new, like just another slightly different shade, maybe for my fill color here. Grab this skin tone and try to fill this in. That looks like it's going pretty good, although I think I actually want it to match the uh, skin tone from his face. So I'm gonna take that color instead and fill these in one more time. Yeah, that makes a little more sense to have it be that color. All right, so uh, last step would really be to do the brush. So again, my pencil color or my outline color, eyedropper, uh, pick the color here, go back to my pencil, and just kind of outline the brush. It's okay if the bristles are the same outline as the rest of the brush. I'll fill it a different color in with the paint bucket. So again, go to my fill colors and do some more eyedropper ring. So I'm going to get this color here, go back to my fill bucket and fill in this part of the brush. Back to fill color, eyedropper here, choose this color and fill in this part of the brush. Fill color one more time, eyedropper here and get this bristle color here to fill in that part of the brush. All right. so. Hide this layer with the photo on it and recenter my project. And there we go, got a pretty good look going here. It looks like I might have had a little bit of a weird spot with the 
edge of his wrist there, which I just kind of popped out, and uh, using that good old path cursor tool. And then I'll just go ahead and fill this in one more time, make sure I'm on my hand layer here, and just fill that in, adjust it. So this looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to add the animating part of it, right? So um, I want to expand my animation, you know, a little bit. Depends on how long you want to make your animation. Um, I'd say at least 24 frames, a couple seconds of animation here would be appropriate. Um, so with the hand, I'm going to just click on the Add Tween button, and that's going to turn this into a clip. And so what I can do is just kind of like go maybe, you know, skip a few frames down, maybe four frames or so. You know, maybe move the arm, uh, tilt the wrist maybe a little bit, and then the tween will kind of take that hand and kind of move it around. Maybe I skip ahead another four frames or so, um, and then just kind of click, maybe drag, maybe rotate again, a little flick of the wrist, and then that kind of just takes that hand and moves it again a little bit. Um, go ahead, maybe another few frames, maybe move the hand up just a little bit, back towards where it was. Skip ahead another few frames, maybe just move it back in just a tad. And then at the end here, what I'll want to do is actually copy this frame. So I'm going to click on this first frame here, hit Command C, go to the end here, hit Command V, and then, um, oh, there we go. Yep, looks like it's in the right spot. So that way it ends right where it started. So I'm just going to hit play here and watch my animation kind of go on a streak. So I did add in a uh, brush stroke layer as also that's kind of being created by the brush. So that I could show is just another layer kind of going underneath here. And then um, let's see. So where do I want that paint to actually go down? So he moves his brush maybe over here. I'll put a frame right underneath and then just take my maybe my brush tool, uh, choose a color here. So maybe go with kind of like a greenish color, I think was what I went with before. So we could paint some happy trees. And uh, if I just kind of like brush a little bit of this on here, um, that will kind of leave that mark. I want to copy it and then paste it. So Command C, Command V, and then paint a little more um, on all these frames here in order to make kind of a mark that goes um, behind the brush, right? So that way you can kind of see him uh, make a little mark on there. If I make this extended, um, it'll look like he kind of reaches out, paints a little bit. So if you kind of keep going with that frame by frame, um, you can keep adding to fill the brush stroke. But that's pretty much it uh, for this animation lesson on how to do character tracing, uh, add in a little tweening action, and create a character animation. So as always, uh, click on the editor settings here, name your project, uh, we can call it character, caricature, uh, you can change your background color if you wish, and hit apply, and then those things will save into uh, your project. So you want to hit export, export GIF uh, to get your GIF animation file, and then you'll submit that on Classroom or post it wherever you need to be. So hope you guys have fun and get creative with this project for character animation with Wick Editor.